pretty straightforward. Same thing, just the other way. It's exactly the same thing, just going the other way. Just make sure there's nothing else special here. To measure active range of motion for wrist radial deviation, the patient is seated next to the table. The forearm and the hand are supported on the table uh, in a fully pronated position. The goniometer is placed on the back of the forearm, wrist, and hand. The stationary arm is simply lined up with the forearm, or more specifically, right over the radius. So you can palpate that to find that. The axis of the goniometer is lined up with the sulcus of the capitate. In order to find that, just palpate the third metacarpal and all the way back to the CMC joint, right about there. Keep going and you'll hit a little valley. That valley is the sulcus of the capitate. And that is where your axis of your goniometer is going to go. Again, the stationary arm is simply lined up with the radius. All right, moving arm is lined up right over the third metacarpal head. So this is your starting position, and then can I have you move your wrist, yep, way over to the side and toward the thumb there, and, but I need you to keep your hand flat. Thank you very much. Uh, and is that as far as it goes? Okay, and so we have about zero to 15 degrees of radial deviation. It's important to make sure that you line it up with the head of the third metacarpal, um, not with the actual fingers because sometimes they'll bring the fingers over one way or another to try to get a little bit more, but it's the head of the metacarpal that you're trying to line it up with. By the way, when I'm doing this in the clinic, I will typically measure both radial and ulnar deviation at the same time. This one is difficult uh, in that it's, it's hard to keep the stationary arm in the same place uh, from one measurement to the next. So I'll do radial and then I'll just say, can you bring your hand over to the other side towards your pinky? And without moving the stationary arm at all, I'll measure ulnar deviation. And that way I at least have a t consistent total arc uh, if my stationary arm wasn't placed in quite the same, type, same place as it was the first time I measured it. 